thank you so much for being a part of our online worship experience today. We're just so excited that you've joined us. And if you've been impacted by this ministry, feel free to share your testimony by sending an email to amen at turningpoint.cc. Or if you'd like to support this ministry financially, you can click the Give button located at the top of your screen. Or you can go to turningpoint.cc and click online giving to support this ministry financially. Once again, we're so excited that you're part of our online worship experience today. And we are praying that you will be encouraged and blessed like never before. Thank you for being with us and enjoy the worship experience. Give God a big praise this morning. Come on, put your hands together. Thank 
gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, it never runs out on me. and begin to thank him for the love of Christ this morning. Hallelujah. Come on all over this place. Say, Lord, your love never fails. Come on, hands lifted high all over this place and say, God, I love you this morning. God, I thank you for the love of Christ. I thank you, God, for loving me even though the things that I did did not please you. God, the things of my past, God, I thank you for forgiving me. Hallelujah. Somebody worship him this morning. Hey, yeah. Somebody take a moment and worship him this morning. Whoa. Your love never fails, never gives up. Never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Sing it again. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. for the love of Christ. Give him a big praise. Come on, praise him like you're thankful for the love of Christ this morning. Hallelujah, we love you, Lord. Come on, if you're thankful this morning, get out your seat, meet and greet, and tell somebody how much you love the Lord. Say, your love, your love never fails, never gives up, and never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, Never runs out on me. Say it again. Your love never fails, never gives up, and never runs out on me. Your love. Your love. Separate my heart from your great love. 
Good morning. Anybody excited to be here this morning? Anybody come expecting a blessing this morning? Praise the Lord. Amen. It's so good. I think the rapture is going to take place. Greg Potts is in a tie. Praise God. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm standing in heaven looking back there. Hallelujah. It's so good to see this morning the presence of the Lord. I'm so excited you're here. We're going to go in prayer. We've got several prayer requests we want to, we want to pray for. And I pray for this service. I'm telling you, if this service is any better than first service, I'm going to split and make a twin. I just can't handle all of it. My good God, it's, it's just so good this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come to you this morning praying for so many needs in this house today, believing that you are the answer, the source, the healer. And Father, we pray, let thy kingdom come, let thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. I thank you, God, that there is no sickness in heaven. There is, God, nobody in lack in heaven. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that you would heal the sick today. God, that you would provide for those that need your provision. Lord, give your peace to those that need your peace. And Father, we pray for every church in this community that lifts up the name of Jesus, that souls would be saved, that revival would break out in Wayne County, and that you would receive all the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. God, touch us in this service. Don't let us leave the same way we came in. But God, encourage us and inspire us. Lord, let folks be saved and dedicate their lives to you. For it's in in Jesus' name we pray. And somebody shout amen. Amen. It's so good to see you here this morning. If you're a first-time visitor or if it's been a while since you've been home at Turning Point, there should be a visitor card in the chair in front of you or beside you or near you. If you can grab that and fill it out and uh, fill that out and place that in the offering. The offering's received in just a few moments. We're so excited that you're here and just ask God to bless you like only He can. Don't forget, prayer is every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. You're more than welcome to stop by and pray every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, for prayer. And if you have a prayer request, you Usually on Tuesdays, they, they take the Turning Point Facebook page. You can comment or message. And if you've got something you need prayer, you can do that on Tuesdays. And the folks here will be praying and believing for your prayer request. And just believing God can do it only He can do. Also, don't forget the small group registration forms are in the foyer. We're launching those in the fall, the small groups. And, and listen, you don't have to do you don't you, you set the small group to the timetable and how you want it. You don't have to do it every week. It can be once a month. It can be once a quarter. Whatever it is, you're more than welcome to lead it and take it as your own. And you can do it in your city and, and where you're from. And we just believe the Lord's going to bless you as you just help folks get connected in, in those small groups. Uh, Brother Jordan's going to make an announcement about the uh, fine arts open house and while he's coming sister carrie is also coming to the stage our new ladies ministry uh leader and she's going to be coming make an announcement too hey july 20th at 5 p.m that's a sunday here at the church we're going to be opening up uh, the fine arts department if you play or sing or if you're gifted in the in the technical areas if you like computers cameras sound anything we want you um, we've got uh, we're looking for some guitar players. Uh, we've got some transitioning out and going to college uh, These um, they are um, We do have rehearsals and all kinds of stuff and we'll talk about that on July 20th But if you're interested in becoming part of our fine arts team We want everybody connected and don't think there's not room for you uh, There if for musician wise if we have to put them out here in the floor and everywhere You know we're gonna get I believe in getting people connected in their gifts in the church uh, so if you want to come sing or anything like that, July 20th at 5 p.m., I'll be reminding every. there's no sign-up needed. Just come uh, and, and share your gift with us, and we'll get you placed and let you know what you got to do there. And for the uh, computer and technical stuff, we need help on our live stream. Uh, you know, you see Pastor Justin come out late uh, a lot of times on Sundays because he's actually back there running it. We have some help, but the people that do it are on shift uh, shift work so they can't be here every Sunday so we are needing some help in that area and you hear the reports all the time of how many viewers we get from all over the world tuning in every Sunday so if you'd like to help in that area come out that night training will be provided if you want to learn we can teach you so come out be a part uh, it is a great thing to get involved in to help our services happen here each and every week so July 20th at 5 p.m. if you have any questions feel free to ask me thank you Good morning. Um, I just wanted to say hey, and let you guys connect the face to, excuse me, to the name, um, the ladies group. We're going to be having a meeting probably next week sometime. 
um, not next, but this coming week, but the week after, because we have a lot of stuff going on in the church. We've got um, some precious babies that are going to come. We have some marriages. So it's going to be a busy end of summer, beginning of the school year, and um, you'll hear more about that. We're also going to get a Facebook page set up for the ladies group as well. Um, but the outreach that we're going to do for July, i very excited about this. I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, Shane's Crib. It's a rehab home for ladies in Wayne County. <coughs> Excuse me. Miss Cheryl Maynard had came and spoke with our ladies group a few months back, and she um, expressed need. The biggest thing is, because it is a house full of ladies, um, they go through a lot of toiletries. Uh, our house, we have three ladies and, and one man, and uh, toilet paper is a scarce commodity. Um, I couldn't imagine having 10 to 12 women in one house at the same time. Uh, so toilet paper is a big, big need, excuse me, need for Shane's crib. This month we're going to do a toilet paper drive at Turning Point. If you would be so kind to bring some toilet paper, we're going to collect it on the foyer um, on Sundays and then we'll move it to another place so hopefully we don't block up the doorway. We're praying that we have enough that it would fill that entire foyer. But we don't want to keep it there because we want you guys to be able to come in as well. Um, the other thing that they need are lady products. I think we all know what those are. Um, so I'm going to make a box so that it's a little more discreet. And I'm going to have that up on the counter in the foyer as well. So all through the month of July, if it touches you that you should donate, I know they would be more than grateful. Again, I could not imagine 12 women in the house at one time. So um, we would greatly appreciate that, and we want to bless them because drug addiction affects so many people. It may not affect you personally, but I guarantee you know somebody who's struggling. So with that, that's it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And also, um, over the next, you know, past couple of weeks, I've asked uh, several of our different elders in the church because of the growth and, and all of that good stuff. Um, so you would know folks you could go to with questions or to get involved. I've asked a couple of our elders every week to prepare to receive the offerings and the tithes to give you their perspective, their testimonies. And this week, I've asked our elders Don and Deborah Davis to come and receive the tithes and the offerings this Sunday morning. So can you all give them a big warm welcome as they come and receive the tithes and the offerings? My name is Deborah Davis, and of course, this is my husband, Don Davis, and I would like to share my testimony today about tithing. Around uh, 34 years ago, we decided we needed to make a change in our lives and started attending a local church here in town. And after attending for a while, we started learning about the concept of tithing. We were just like everybody else, thinking, we can't do this, you know, it's another bill, you know, and we felt like we were maxed out. But my husband at that time said, made a command decision and said, we're going to pay tithes. And so 34 years later, that's what we did. And we have been truly blessed beyond measure. We have two awesome boys that have two awesome wives, which is a blessing from God. And now we have two beautiful grandchildren. That's another blessing from God. So paying tithes is not just pro for prosperity blessings, although God is in the blessing business, but it's a covering of all areas of your life. Your children, your grandchildren will be blessed also. And, you know, we're children of God also, and that's what he wants. He wants to bless us as his children. Deuteronomy 28 talks about the obedience, the blessings for obedience. Everything in your life will be blessed when you are obedient to God's word. Uh, 1 Samuel 15 and 22 also says obedience is better than sacrifice. I am so thankful today that we made this decision so many years ago, and I am in awe of God's blessings in our lives. Looking at the biblical teaching of the first fruits, you see on the overhead slide there a picture of Jesus at the supper table the Passover table. What you have there in the center of the table is a representation of the Passover feast. 
He was telling his disciples, do this in remembrance of me. What you have there at the table, in the center of the table, is the best gift that ever could be given to mankind. For God so loved the world that he gave. Sitting at the table, representation of the first fruits principle, Jesus is the first one born, begotten. He is the first one that ever was, and we all come from him. Sitting at the table was the Lamb of God that was going to be slain from the foundation of the world. We see there in this next picture there, we see the young people there as they came, and the Bible said that they were to pick out this lamb, the best lamb that they could find that represented the first out of their flock. They were to dedicate their firstborn children to God. And here at Turning Point, that's what we do, dedicate our children to God. And if you need to do that, you need to see the pastor and get you an appointment. It's a biblical principle. There we also see the young man has some fruit and vegetables in his hand. Another place in the Bible said that they were to mark a portion of their field and bring the best portion of of that field to God. They were to mark it off and say, now this portion, the first portion that came in, it's not going to go to my table, but it's going to go to God's table. So we see in the next slide there, the Bible gives us uh, the uh, that God instituted the law of the first fruits. When we made these tithing boxes, we put on there first fruits. So Exodus 13 and 1, it says, set apart the firstborn I just told you about. And for me, your firstborn son, dedication them to God, and the firstborn of your livestock. I also told you about the parts of the cro uh, crops that's found in Deuteronomy. So we see that in the next slide that this basket represents the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the Bible teaches us that we're not to come to God empty-handed. You see, in Deuteronomy 16 and 16, they're commanded during the feast not to appear before the Lord empty. Remember, it was at the, the table. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. The best gift was sitting at the table. The firstborn among all men was sitting at the table. We all here today because he created us. The Lamb of God, the best gift, was sitting at the table. And he says in the Old Testament, do not appear before me empty. There again in Exodus 23 and 19, bring your best gift, the first harvest to, of the house of God. Now, you say, Brother Davis, now I understand this thing, what you're talking about is in the Old Testament. I'm talking about simply for you today, my little exhortation is, bring your best gift to God. Jesus did not do away with the principle of the, the, the giving. In fact, he, he reiterated it. And he said it like this, and he gave us the law of giving, Luke 6 and 38. And Jesus said, if you give, you shall get. If you give, you shall get. And it will return to you in full and overflowing uh, measure, pressed down. In other words, it's pressed down. It's sort of going to grow as it comes back out. Listen, you can't outgive God. Can somebody say amen? Next slide. You see, the Bible says here that in the book of Deuteronomy, I want you to see uh, see this, uh, and it, 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 actually in the book of Exodus, it says that uh, Moses was instructed to tell the people to celebrate this feast of the Passover when they get into the wilderness. And the Bible, instit God instituted this feast as they exited out of, ex out of uh, uh, Egypt, and uh, the exodus, if you will. And when they went into the wilderness, the Bible said they went there for 40 years. But I researched this, and I looked. And Brian, I want you to look for me. But I want you to, the Bible teaches us, I believe, and it just shows us one time that in the wilderness, uh, the Bible gives us uh, that they uh, gave uh, and, and, and did this Passover feast one time is all the Bible tells us that they did it in 40 years. In other words, after they got the blood on their doorpost, it's like they came to church for 40 years and never gave an offering. Amen? Now, the, go to the next slide. Now, I want you to think on that. Now, 
Well, they was in that wilderness for 40 years, and the, the sad part about it now, this older generation, they didn't get it. They didn't think that they could get the, what God uh, promised they could have, and he had told them about the promised land. He had told them about Canaan land. Canaan land is a land of production. Canaan land is a, a land that gives you uh, something after you plant seed in the ground. In fact, after they left the wilderness, the bread and manna quit coming down. And then when they went into the wilderness, uh, went into Canaan land, they had to plant a seed and the land would produce the, the, the wheat and the grain so they could have bread. So what Joshua said, he said, after these people, they died in the wilderness. They didn't get it. it see, the wilderness journey and, uh, and the people who don't tithe, whether you realize it or not, you got the blood, you're saved, but you're going through the will, you're going through life and, and complaining and moaning and groaning. I can't do it. I can't afford it. Then people know I ain't got no, I can't do it. I can't go. But listen, there comes a time in life you have to decide that I can get God's best for me, which is representation of Canaan land. Listen, this check I have in my hand represents represents the portion of the income that God gave us this week. We marked it out for 34 years, that woman told you. And somebody has got to make a command decision in your household. We're going to do it and get God's best. Can somebody say amen? This is, this here represents Canaan land production. I'm going to put it in this box. And he said, I'm going to get exceedingly abundantly more than I ever ask or receive. It's coming back. Can somebody say amen? Listen, don't you go 40 years not maturing, getting this tithing concept and miss the point of God's best for your life. Listen, there is a place in life, I said it in the early service, I'm not bragging, but me and this woman have has built three brand new homes, and when we go to buy an automobile, we get what we want. Listen, that ain't because we've made a bunch of bunch of money, it's because we sowed seed for 34 years, and we got God's best. Can somebody say amen? Father, thank you. Get your seed ready. Get your best seed ready. Label it as your best worship. We're fixing to worship God in giving. Get ready to bring it and give it to the house of God. That's where he said bring it. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We're rejoicing. You brought us out of Egypt. God, we're going to celebrate it. We're not going to die in the wilderness. We're going to celebrate tithing. We're going to give our best gifts. We love you. We thank you for giving us jobs. We thank you for helping us to understand and mature, to learn to be a tither in your house, God. Bless this house with seed, with increase of every household it represents. We pray these blessings upon the givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Come and give. God bless you. Amen. was silenced at your own command my broken heart was healed in the palm of your hands but you Low death oh, yes. and overwhelm me with life. You made your blood oh, yes. and my pain collide. Beautiful love, you are my king. Come on and stand with us. You
stretched out your arms and broke my fall on that day when your love took my place on the cross but you Carries 
in this room Hallelujah. if you got a Bible turn me to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 8 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 8 I want to read just two verses of scripture 2 Corinthians chapter 8 or chapter 1 verse 8 says we do not want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters about the troubles we experience in the province of Asia we were under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure so that we despaired of life itself indeed we felt that we had received the sentence of death but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves but on God who raises the dead he has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us again. On Him we have set our hope that He will continue to deliver us. I want to focus on verse number 8. Paul said we were under great pressure. We were under great pressure. We were under great pressure. Pressure. If you haven't been through any pressure or any trouble, this message won't be for you. But if you've been through some trouble or going through some trouble or know one day you're going to have to go through some trouble, through some pressure, through some rough times, this message is for you. It's going to encourage you. It's going to bless you. And it's going to help you realize that more pressure means more power. More pressure means more power. If you want to get us an anointing with me, will you slip your hands up high towards heaven together and let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word today. God, I ask in these few moments of time together, Lord, speak to us. Let us realize, God, the times you allow pressure in our life is just to produce more power for your glory. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. And before you see the high five, somebody say, pray for people on the front row. Pray for the people on the front row this morning. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, you have to understand that Paul is writing this text of the church at Corinth, and he says, He says, I want to inform you of some things at the church of Corinth. He says, I don't want you to be uninformed of some things. There are some things that happen, some things that we went through, some things that we learned that I want you to not be uninformed, and I want you to know what happened so you can be informed. But he says, I want you to realize. It is Paul that is writing this text in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. You have to understand that Paul has not always been Paul. As a matter of fact, his name used to be Saul. And Saul was a ruthless man whose job was to direct the crucifixions and to try to wipe out Christianity in the land in the days that he lived and breathed on planet earth. It was this Saul that was so ruthless and such a diabolical man that he would watch the skulls of Christians be crushed as they were tormented for their faith and belief in Jesus Christ. But the Bible said that while he was on the road to Damascus, while he was on the road preparing to direct and lead more crucifixions and to see more Christians be tormented because of their faith and their belief, it was on the road of Damascus that Jesus stops him dead in his tracks. A light shines in front of him. He's blinded and he changes his 
his name from Saul to Paul because Jesus saves him on the spot and he goes from trying to kill Christians to now he's wrote three-fourths of the New Testament he, he used to be he used to be trying to kill Christianity but now God has saved him and turned his life around and I wonder is there anybody in this room on this Sunday morning that before we dive into this thing can you give God a praise you're not who you used to be you can give God a praise you're not who you used to be you don't smoke what you used to smoke you don't drink what you used to drink oh I wish you could give God a I thank God I ain't who I used to be kind of praise I used to be So the Bible says that he opens up here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. He says, I don't want you to be uninformed, my brothers and my sisters, about the troubles that we experienced. He says, I want you to realize that I experienced some troubles even being a Christian. He said, even though I was a Christian, I had to go through some troubles. You have to understand that just because you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you've accepted him as your savior, it does not make you exempt from trouble coming into your life and into your home. Trouble is going to come. The Bible said it rains on the just and the unjust. Jesus said as long as you're breathing on planet earth, as long as you're living on this planet called earth, he said, that in this world you will have trouble. You will have tribulation. You have to understand that as long as you're breathing on this planet you're going to have trouble. Saved people have trouble and unsaved people have trouble. Deacons have trouble and dope dealers have trouble. Ain't nobody going to help me in this room but as long as you're living on this earth you are going to have trouble. You're going to have trouble in your home, trouble in in your marriage, trouble with your kids, trouble with understanding why some things happen and some things didn't happen. You are going to have trouble in this life. But Paul says, I want you to realize what separates the saved folks from the unsaved folks is if you're saved, you have a God who is with you in the midst of your trouble. I said God is not absent from your trouble. God is with you in your trouble. You see, the enemy wants to convince you and I that when trouble comes, that God is absent from our trouble. But I submit to you that God is attracted to your trouble. God is not absent in your trouble. God is present in your trouble. The Bible said he's a very present help in the time of trouble. God is not far away from you in trouble. He is with you when you're in trouble. And you need to give your God a praise right here and thank him that in your trouble you're not alone he's never left you he's not walked away from you he is with you in your trouble he's helping you in your trouble he's holding your hand in the trouble God is a very present help in the time of trouble your problems do not cause God to be absent they cause God to be present in your trouble the Bible said there was a woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. She was in trouble with religion. She was in a great deal of trouble. She was caught in the very act of adultery. She was in trouble. Religion was there. Her accusers were there. Her haters were there. Her doubters were there. But I want to submit to you that many people would begin to believe that when you're in trouble, that God is not there in your trouble, that God is absent. But look at the woman caught in the act of adultery. Not only was religion there, not only was her haters there, not only was her doubters there, but the Bible said that Jesus was there in the midst of her trouble. I don't care what kind of trouble you got yourself in, baby. I don't care what trouble you're going through your God is not absent from you he is present with you 
He's there to defend you in front of your haters. He's there to pick you up when you fall down. He's there to love you when you're there feeling unlovable. And you ought to give your God a praise right here. If you've ever been through some trouble, if you've ever jacked it up, you ought to thank your God right here. He's a very present help. My God is not absent in the trouble. He is present in my trouble. And Paul says, you got to learn that even as a Christian, you're going to go through troubled times. You're going to have pressure. He says, but I want you to realize that God is with you in the trouble. God is not absent because of your problems. God is present with you in your problems. He says, but what you have to learn, he writes this text in 2 Corinthians, and he first starts off by talking about his problems. But then he flips the script and he starts talking about his God that has delivered him and will deliver him again. Paul says, I learned that in life you have to get your eyes off of the trouble and get your eyes on the God who is with you in the trouble. You see, you have got to take inventory of your life and see what you've been talking about. So many times we talk about our trouble and we tell our God how big our trouble is, but you need to start telling your trouble how big your God is. <laughs> you see, <laughs> you, can always see, you can always look at somebody in the church house and see if they believe their God is bigger than the trouble or if they believe their trouble is bigger than their God. Because somebody who believes their God is bigger than their trouble, that's a praiser. That's a worshiper. That's somebody that will lift their hands in spite of the trouble. That's somebody that will clap in spite of the depression, in spite of the loneliness, in spite of the hurt, in spite of the trouble. Because you see, a praiser understands. You see, Judah means praise. Praise. Judah means praise. Judah means praise. But when you begin to learn about Judah in the Bible, you'll find out that Judah had some offspring, and one of his offspring was named Perez. Perez means to choke the very neck of your enemy. You see, when you get to praising your God in the middle of a service, your praise starts producing something. I know you can't see it in the natural, baby, but when you clap your hands in the midst of trouble, when you lift your hands, when you open up your mouth and shout in the midst of your trouble, Judah is giving birth to Perez, and he's choking the neck of your enemy. If you want the devil to shut up, I dare to give him a pray, God a praise right here and say, choke out my enemies, choke out my trouble, choke out my depression, choke out my battle. Oh, give your God a praise in the midst of the trouble. Get your eyes off the trouble and get your eyes on your God who is with you in the trouble. Because if God has done it once, God can do it again. Paul said, he said, God has delivered us from the deadly peril and he will deliver us again. You see, you have to understand that you serve a God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You may have a different set of problems, but you have the same God. You may have a different kind of trouble today than you did yesterday, but you serve the same God. You may be going through a different attack today than you did yesterday, but the same God who helped you yesterday, He is faithful today, and He's going to bring you out tomorrow. I I said if he done it once he can do it again if he healed once he can do it again if he delivered once he can do it again if he saved once he can save again I said God can do it again thank God for two people I said God can do it again We come to church 
and we sing our songs and we sit in service and we allow this world and our trouble to convince us that God is not going to do anything for us until we die and go to heaven. The devil is a liar. I serve a Savior that said greater works than these shall you do. He said let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. God is still a healer. God is still a provider. God is still a way maker. If he done it for your neighbor, he can do it for you. If he done it for me, oh, I wish somebody would give your God. God can do it again even if you mess it up the first time. God can do it again. And then it gets us to the good point of the message that I want to come to when Paul said we were under great pressure. Not average pressure. Not just any kind of pressure. Paul said it was great pressure. The reason why the pressure was great is because it was producing something on the inside of me that was more powerful than what was outside of me. Jordan, come help me. Come help me, Jordan. You see, the Bible said, Paul said we were under great pressure. This water pistol has no pressure in it. If I shoot it, that's as far as it goes. It's not very powerful with no pressure. But Paul said, he said, I was under great pressure. He said, I had pressure all around me. You see, pressure doesn't just affect what's outside of you. Pressure affects what's on the inside of you. And some of you in this room, you act like you have everything together on the outside. But if you would be real, you got some pressure on the inside. You got some battles on the inside. You got some questions on the inside. You got some doubt on the inside. But God said, I'm using that pressure to create more power. I'm, more pressure in your life just means more power in your life. Can I get a witness up in here? I said more pressure means more power. When I come through this battle, when I come through this attack, I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to be wiser. I need somebody who's under some pressure to give your God a praise. Give your God a praise. Give your God a praise. And say, devil, hit me with your pressure. Hit me with doubt. Hit me with worry. Oh, it's just producing more power in my life. Preacher, I don't believe it. You've lost your mind. I'm getting on Facebook and telling the world y'all shoot water pistols at turning point. <laughs> well, you tell them, but make sure you hashtag more pressure is more power. Because the Bible said in Mark chapter 5, verse 27, it said the crowd was pressing on Jesus. Jesus had pressure all around him. Jesus was in the middle of the pressure. And the Bible said while the crowd was pressing on him, when he was in the middle of the pressure, the Bible said in verse 27, there was a woman with an issue of blood 
The Bible said she stepped into the press. Oh, shout out by kind of bohoshete. She stepped into the pressure. We want to run away from the pressure this lady steps into. Church folks want to run from the pressure. This lady said, no, 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 no. For me to get what I need, I got to step into the pressure. She stepped into the press because she understood that more pressure, it means more power. Oh, more pressure means more power. And in the middle of her pressure, she touches Jesus in the midst of the pressure and she gets healed because more pressure means more power. close them. This woman in the middle of her pressure grabbed on to Jesus. She didn't understand why she was sick. She didn't understand why for 12 years she got worse instead of better. But she said, I'm not going to grab on to doubt. I'm not going to grab on to worry. In the middle of my pressure, I'm grabbing on to Jesus and holding His hand. And I believe when she stepped into the pressure, when she stepped into the press, I believe on the inside, God was pushing some things out so He could put some better things in. I believe when she stepped into the pressure, God was pushing out doubt. He was pushing out worry. He was pushing out anxiety. He was pushing out her past. He was pushing out the tears and the rejection and the loneliness and the worry. And he was getting ready to put in healing in her body. And some of you in this room been saying, God, deliver me from the pressure. The pressure is what you need to become a better you. God is pushing things out of you in the pressure so He can put better things in you. That's our message to this community. It doesn't matter if you're saved or unsaved. You're going to go through times of trouble. You're going to go through times of pressure. But instead of reaching out and grabbing the alcohol, Grabbing the hotel room, ain't nobody gonna help me in here. Instead of grabbing the booty call, can I be real in here? Instead of grabbing the drugs and the crack, the cigarettes, the joint, why not in the next time in the middle of your pressure, lift your hands and grab the hand that wants to hold you in the middle? of your pressure I wonder if there's somebody in this room that's going through pressure and you thought about quitting you thought about giving up there's an anointing in this room your Savior is reaching out to you could, could you raise your hand right where you're at say God I don't understand the, I don't understand what's happened these last few weeks I don't understand why I've had to go through what I've went through why you didn't do what I but God I, I'm going I'm to hold your hand and believe that what's ahead of me is better than what's behind me. If I'll grab your hand, you'll help me in the midst of my pressure. Because catch you, Sister Rachel, come help me. It's good to have y'all from Augusta. Praise God. Can you stand right here? Some of you are right in the middle of pressure. You are right in the middle of a storm. You are right in the middle of wanting to give up and have a nervous breakdown. And there was part of you screaming, let me go back. Let me go back to the drugs. Let me go back to the club. Let me go back to the depression, but can I submit to you today that if you will hold his hand, if you will hold his hand, 
if you will hold his hand, it takes just as much energy to go back as it does to go forward. It takes just as much energy to move ahead. And what's in front of you does not compare to what's behind you. Don't go back. Don't go back. Don't go back. Hold his hand and go forward. Because if you'll stick with the pressure, I ain't going to soak them because they already soaked enough. If you'll endure the pressure, more pressure means more power. If you'll stick through the pressure, God's going to launch you farther out, farther than you could have ever went if you'd have ran from the pressure. That's why the devil messed up when they put my Jesus on a cross. When they put the nails in his hands and his feet, the crown of thorns in his head, he was under an enormous amount of pressure. The Bible said when he was in the garden, his sweat, he sweated blood. He was under such pressure from the sin, your sin, my sin, your neighbor's sin. But the Bible said that when they stuck him in the side, that water and blood flowed out. It rushed out because of the pressure. He bled for you in the midst of pressure to tell you the same God that defeated death, hell, and the grave. He can help you defeat whatever you're going through. And this is totally different than the first, ser- for first service, but I don't know why I feel this so strongly. I believe there's people in this room. You've been under your pressure and you've been, you've been grabbing Jesus' hand, but you've been grabbing other stuff's hand. And I believe there's some people in this room you want to be delivered today you're tired of holding on to him and hanging on to the drugs and the alcohol and the depression and the loneliness and I believe I heard the Lord say today is your day of deliverance today is the day where you can lift both hands instead of just one hand so if you're in this room You want to be set free. I'm not saying you're not saved. You can be saved and still struggle. Thank God for three people. You can be saved and still grab stuff around you. If you're in this room and say, Pastor, I want to let go of what's behind me and around me, and I'm ready to be free today. I want you to move out of that chair as they sing. And meet me at this altar and God's going to set some people free in the midst of your pressure. In the midst of your trouble. Come on, I'm waiting for you. 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 I'm waiting for you.
been in pressure, trouble all around you and you say God I need you to help me make it through the pressure I need you to help me make it through the trouble I want you to get out of that seat that woman had to move that woman had to move she had to move and grab a I want you to move out of that chair and meet me at this altar I want to pray for you because God is going to touch you with his amazing power he's going to touch you with his amazing power more pressure means more power sing it, sing it, sing it sing in the presence
I refuse to leave this church the same way I came in. I refuse to leave struggling with what I struggled when I walked in here. Can I get a witness in here? I refuse to walk out the same way I came in. And there is an anointing in this room. There's an anointing in this room. There's an anointing in this room. You just got to reach up and grab it. thankful for his presence this morning hallelujah 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 praise God the devil messed up when he put the pressure on you but you hear me it takes just as much energy to go back as it does to go forward. And what's ahead of you will never compare to what's behind you. Move forward in Jesus' name. Would you raise your hand? I want to pray for you and bless you. Don't miss Wednesday. We've been talking about glories. We're going deeper this Wednesday. I'd love to see you here. Father, I pray for every hand that is raised to you. God, because I know there will be times that they'll go through pressure, they'll go through trouble. But I thank you for reminding us this morning that you are not absent in our trouble, you are present in our trouble. And I thank you today that in the middle of the pressure, if we'll grab your hand, you're producing more power in our life. God, there's marriages in this room that's been under pressure. But I thank you that marriage shall live and not die. Yes. And declare the works of you. I thank you for your anointing in this room. What a precious anointing. I thank you more power. 
is coming from the pressure. Bless your people. Make your face to shine upon them. Help us move forward. In Jesus' name we pray. And if you believe more power is coming, you give you one more hand clap of praise. I love you. I'll see you Wednesday. Thank you so much for being a part of our online worship experience today. We're just so excited that you've joined us. And if you've been impacted by this ministry, feel free to share your testimony by sending an email to amen at turningpoint.cc. Or if you'd like to support this ministry financially, you can click the Give button located at the top of your screen. Or you can go to turningpoint.cc and click Online Giving to support this ministry financially. Once again, we're so excited that you're part of our online worship experience today. And we are praying that you will be encouraged and blessed like never before. Thank you for being with us and enjoy the worship experience.